Primus smiled cruelly as he shot the human diplomat in the chest, not knowing that murdering Chris Adams would be the biggest regret of his soon-to-be-cut-short Iconian life. Chris slumped forward on the polished obsidian table, dark red blood pooling under his head. The Iconian High Councillor leaned back with a smug grin, assured off his species' superiority. He could already see the Iconian war fleet bombarding the defenseless human colonies, slaughtering millions. Little did they know the Earth Alliance had been holding back. And now these arrogant aliens had gone too far. They had no idea of the sleeping giant they had just awoken. No clue about the human military's true capabilities. The Iconians were about to find out what happens when you provoke humanity's wrath. They were about to learn that you should never, ever underestimate the humans. Chris Adams, the murdered diplomat, had been humanity's last olive branch, its final attempt at peace. The 32-year-old had travelled to the Iconian homeworld for a crucial summit meeting, a desperate bid to deter the increasingly aggressive aliens. For months, the Iconians had been threatening the human colony worlds near their territory, making outrageous demands. They insisted the colonies be abandoned, the land ceded to their empire. But the colonies were under the sacred protection of the Earth Alliance, and the humans would rather die than leave their homes. They would fight to the last man to defend their families. So that's what Chris had tried to convey at the summit. But the Iconians wouldn't listen. Primus, Chris's alien counterpart, had escorted him into the meeting with a whispered threat, boasting of the Iconians' technological supremacy. Then the High Counselor had sneered at Chris's refusal to surrender the colonies, claiming that the mighty Iconian fleet would crush humanity like insects. Chris had stayed calm, giving them one last warning that they were underestimating humankind. They could have listened, but instead, enraged by his defiance, they executed him on the spot. Chris was dead, and now the Iconians will pay. They will face the unrestrained might of the human war machine. They will taste the fury of a species with nothing left to lose. The Iconians think they are the apex predators of the galaxy, but they have never witnessed monsters like us. The news of Chris Adams' brutal murder sent shockwaves rippling through the Earth Alliance. Footage of the diplomat's execution played on every news channel and spread like wildfire across social media. The people were outraged. They demanded justice, retribution against the alien scum who had so callously killed one of their own. President Jonathan Michaels knew he had to act fast. He called for an emergency press conference, his weathered face grim as he strode to the podium. The old soldier had seen his fair share of battles, but this was unlike anything he had faced before. An all-out war with a hostile alien species. He gripped the sides of the podium, his knuckles white as he addressed the nation. My fellow humans, today we mourn the loss of Chris Adams, a brave man who died serving his people. But more than that, we face a grave new threat. The Iconians have made it clear they intend to destroy us. They want our colonies, our resources and our lives, but we will not let them have them. The President paused, letting his words sink in. What the Iconians didn't know is that Chris Adams was more than just a diplomat. He was a highly trained operative, equipped with a special neural implant that transmitted everything he saw and heard back to Earth. We have recordings of the Iconians threatening Chris and then murdering him in cold blood. We also captured critical intel on their military capabilities and fleet movements. He straightened his shoulders, his voice hardening with resolve. I am therefore ordering the full mobilization of Earth's military forces. We are now at war with the Iconian Empire. We will avenge Chris Adams and protect our colonies at all costs. The Iconians think we're weak. They think we'll be easy prey, but they're about to find out how wrong they are. Humanity will prevail. The people cheered, rallying behind their leader as the machinery of war rumbled to life. Factories worked overtime to churn out ships, tanks and weapons. Soldiers trained harder than ever before, preparing for the battles to come. Earth was ready to unleash the full might of its advanced war machine. On the Iconian homeworld, Primus strutted into the High Counselor's chamber, still riding high off executing the pathetic human. I put that Terran dog down, he boasted. Did you see the look on his face? The High Counselor grinned, baring his sharp teeth. 
You've done well, Primus. We'll make an example of the humans. Teach the galaxy what happens to those who defy us. I'm promoting you to Fleet Commander. You will lead the invasion of the human colonies. Wipe them out. All of them. Primus saluted, his chest swelling with pride. It will be my pleasure. The human colonies will burn. Their people will be slaves or corpses. Soon, the Iconian flag will fly over every world. As the mighty Iconian armada approached the first human colony, Primus was already savouring his impending triumph. The primitive apes would be no match for Iconian warships. This would be quick and easy. But suddenly alarms blared across the fleet as strange contacts appeared on their sensors. Human ships, dozens of them, had appeared out of nowhere around the colony. The Terran craft seemed to shimmer into existence as their cloaks disengaged. Primus gaped in disbelief. How could the humans have such advanced stealth technology? They weren't supposed to be this capable. Cold fear crept down his spine as the Earth fleet moved to engage. The Iconians had gravely underestimated their enemy, and now they would pay the price. The Earth Alliance warships materialized around the human colony, their advanced cloaking technology disengaging to reveal a formidable fleet. The human vessels bristled with cutting-edge weaponry, the likes of which the Iconians had never seen. Primus's eyes widened in shock as the first volley of energy beams lanced out from the Earth ships, slicing through the Iconian shields like they were made of paper. The Iconian ships shuddered under the onslaught, their hulls buckling and fracturing as the relentless barrage continued. Explosions blossomed across the Iconian fleet, the once proud warships reduced to shattered husks in mere moments. Alarms blared on the bridge of Primus's ship as damage reports flooded in, painting a grim picture of the fleet's deteriorating state. Primus slammed his fist on the console, his earlier confidence evaporating. All ships fall back, regroup at the designated coordinates. He turned to his tactical officer, his voice tight with barely restrained anger. Analyze their weapons and find me a way to counter them. The humans shouldn't have this kind of technology. As the battered Iconian fleet limped away from the colony, a small sleek vessel detached from the Earth Alliance formation. The Spectre infiltration team, led by Captain Jason Reynolds, deftly maneuvered their ship towards the Iconian command vessel, their approach masked by the advanced stealth systems. Jason's jaw clenched as he thought of Chris, his friend and comrade, murdered in cold blood by the Iconians. The Spectres had a mission. Capture high-value targets, gather intel, and make the Iconians pay for what they'd done. The infiltration ship docked with the Iconian command vessel, and the Spectres sprang into action. Their stealth suits shimmered, rendering them nearly invisible as they moved through the corridors like ghosts. Iconian soldiers fell before they even knew they were under attack, the Spectres' weapons cutting through their armor with ease. Jason led his team towards the ship's data core, their objective clear. They needed the information stored within to win this war. The Spectres breached the core's defenses, and the team's tech expert went to work, her fingers flying over the console as she downloaded the precious data. Back on Earth, President Michaels faced a wall of screens, each displaying the leader of a different galactic power. He laid out the evidence of the Iconians' aggression the recordings from Chris's implant damning in their clarity. The other leaders listened, their expressions shifting from skepticism to anger as the extent of the Iconian threat became clear. One by one they pledged their support to the Earth Alliance. They had all suffered under the Iconians' bullying and threats, and now, with humanity leading the charge, they saw a chance to strike back. A coalition formed, united in their determination to bring the Iconians to heel. On the Iconian command ship, Jason and his team fought their way towards the bridge, the ship's elite guards falling before the Spectre's onslaught. As they breached the bridge, Jason locked eyes with Primus, the Iconian commander's face twisted with hate. The two warriors clashed in a brutal hand-to-hand -hand fight, their armor sparking as they traded blows. Primus sneered his words dripping with venom. Your friend Chris died like a coward, begging for his life. We were always going to invade your pathetic species. His death was just the beginning. Jason's vision turned red, 
rage surging through his veins. He launched himself at Primus, his enhanced strength overpowering the Iconian, his hands closed around Primus's throat, the alien's eyes bulging as he gasped for air. But even through his anger, Jason knew Primus was more valuable alive. With a growl, he released his grip, slamming the Iconian commander into the deck and snapping restraints around his wrists. Primus would face justice for his crimes, and his knowledge would be the key to humanity's victory. Jason secured the restraints around Primus's wrists, the Iconian commander glaring at him with pure hatred. The Spectre leader ignored the look, tapping his comm unit. Command, this is Reynolds. Primus is in custody and the bridge is secure. I repeat, we have control of the Iconian command ship. There was a crackle of static before a voice responded. Excellent work, Captain. We'll inform the fleet immediately, secure any valuable intel, and prepare for extraction. Jason acknowledged the order, then turned to his team. You heard them. Sweep the ship, gather anything useful, and let's get the hell out of here. As the Spectres went to work, the Earth Alliance fleet received word of their success. Admiral Nora Sato, commanding from the bridge of her flagship, smiled grimly. All ships, press the attack. The Iconian fleet is in disarray. Let's show them what happens when they mess with humanity. The coalition fleet surged forward, the Iconian ships faltering without their leadership. Earth Alliance vessels and those of their allies tore into the enemy ranks, their advanced weapons cutting swathes of destruction. The Iconians, once so arrogant, fled before the onslaught. The battle raged on, the coalition pushing the Iconians back to their homeworld, but as they approached the planet, they were met with a daunting sight. A massive planetary shield encased the globe, shimmering with energy. Orbital weapon platforms bristled with cannon emplacements, ready to repel any attack. Admiral Sato frowned, studying the readouts. A frontal assault would be costly. Even with their advanced technology, they needed another way. She opened a channel to the Spectre team, who had just returned from the Iconian command ship. Captain Reynolds, we have a situation. The Iconian homeworld is heavily defended. We need to neutralize those defenses, but an orbital bombardment would result in heavy casualties. I'm open to suggestions. Jason thought for a moment, then replied, Admiral, the data we pulled from the command ship might have something. Give us a moment to analyze it. The Spectres poured over the stolen intel, looking for any weakness in the Iconian defenses. Finally, their tech expert spoke up. I've got something. There's a vulnerability in the shield's power grid, a critical junction deep beneath the planet's surface. If we could get a team in there to sabotage it, the shield would collapse. Jason nodded, a plan forming in his mind. Admiral, we've found a way. We'll need a team of engineers and some Spectre support. If we can infiltrate this power facility and disable the grid, the shield will fall. Then the fleet can move in. Admiral Sato agreed, and preparations began. A crack team of Earth Alliance engineers was assembled, their skills honed by years of experience. The Spectres would accompany them, providing security and tactical support. The infiltration team covertly landed on the Iconian homeworld, slipping past sensor nets and patrols. They made their way to the entrance of the underground power facility, a heavily guarded structure of reinforced metal. The Spectres moved in first, their stealth suits rendering them nearly invisible. They silently dispatched the guards, clearing the way for the engineers. The team entered the facility, moving quickly towards the central power junction. But as they approached their target, alarms began to blare. A hidden security system had detected their presence, alerting the facility's defenders. The engineers worked frantically to sabotage the power grid, while the Spectres took up defensive positions. A contingent of Iconian soldiers, led by a ruthless commander named Zyrus, bore down on their position. Plasma bolts filled the air as the two sides clashed, the Spectres fighting with grim determination to buy the engineers' time. Despite their advanced weapons and training, the Spectres were slowly being pushed back. Zyrus and his soldiers were relentless, driven by a fanatical loyalty to the High Council. Just as it seemed the humans would be overwhelmed, a new group entered the fray. 
A band of Iconian rebels, armed and armoured, attacked Zerus' flank. The rebel leader, a charismatic figure named Kailus, called out to the spectres, We're on your side. We want an end to this war, an end to the High Council's tyranny. With the rebels' help, the tide of battle turned. The spectres and their newfound allies drove back Zerus's forces, giving the engineers the precious minutes they needed. With a final burst of sparks, the power junction overloaded, and the planetary shield flickered and died. On the bridge of her flagship, Admiral Sato watched as the shield collapsed. She opened a channel to the Iconian High Council, her voice filled with steely resolve. Your defences are gone, and your fleet is in ruins. Surrender now, or face the consequences. In the halls of the Iconian government, the High Council members argued and bickered, their unity shattered by the sudden turn of events. Some called for a final stand, but others, seeing the futility, pushed for surrender. In the end, faced with the prospect of annihilation, the High Council agreed to lay down their arms and negotiate a peace treaty. On the surface of the Iconian homeworld, Jason Reynolds and Kalis stood side by side, watching as the Earth Alliance ships landed, bringing diplomats and peacekeepers. The war was over, but the hard work of rebuilding and forging a lasting peace was just beginning. The two warriors, once enemies, now stood united in their hope for a better future. Earth Alliance soldiers secured key locations across the Iconian homeworld as the rebel forces worked to maintain order. Primus found himself dragged in chains before a hastily assembled war crimes tribunal. He glared defiantly at the judges, a mix of human and Iconian officials. The proceedings were swift but thorough. Evidence piled up against Primus and the High Council. Recordings from Chris Adams' neural implant played, damning in their clarity. Primus's own boasts of the planned invasion sealed his fate. The tribunal delivered their verdict. Primus and the surviving High Council members were sentenced to life imprisonment on a remote penal colony, their power stripped away forever. Kalus, the rebel leader, stepped forward to address the Iconian people. He spoke of a new era of peace and cooperation, of a government that would work for the benefit of all. The Iconians, weary of war and deception, rallied behind him. On Earth, a memorial service was held for Chris Adams. Dignitaries from across the galaxy came to pay their respects. President Michaels spoke of Chris's bravery and sacrifice, but it was Jason Reynolds, Chris's closest friend, who delivered the eulogy. Jason's voice shook as he stood at the podium. Chris believed in the power of understanding, in the strength of unity. He gave his life for these ideals. Let us honour him by striving to build a galaxy where such sacrifices are no longer necessary. As the service ended, a shocking revelation came to light. Iconian rebels combing through the High Council's secret files discovered the existence of an ancient AI called Nexus. This AI a relic of a long-dead race, had been subtly guiding the Iconians for centuries, pushing them toward conquest. The news sent shockwaves through the Earth Alliance and the new Iconian government. The true enemy, it seemed, was still out there, hidden in the shadows. In a private meeting, President Michaels and Kalis agreed that the threat of Nexus had to be dealt with. They turned to Jason Reynolds, asking him to lead a joint task force to hunt down the A.I., Jason accepted the mission, his jaw set with determination. He knew it wouldn't be easy, but he owed it to Chris to see this through. The story ended with Jason standing alone at Chris's grave, his hand resting on the cold stone. I won't let you down, buddy, he whispered. No matter what it takes, I'll finish what you started. He turned and walked away, ready to face the unknown challenges ahead. The fight for peace, it seemed, was only just beginning. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.